Here's a visual you may have seen before. We have four dart players. Al, B, Betty, C for Chris, and D for Diane. Uh, Betty, Betty and Diane, not so good. Al, definitely don't you know put money up against Al. But the question is, which dart player is precise? Which ones are precise? Which ones are accurate? Now you might be able to figure this out without even looking at the definition, but let me give you the definition of precise. Precise is, or precision, how close repeated measurements are to each other. How consistent. So precision, I think of precision as consistency. And accuracy is a different concept altogether. The two are not related at all. Accuracy is how close measurements are to, I'll just say, to the target value, which is like the true value, the actual, the true real number that you're trying to measure. How close did you get to the actual correct value? So who's precise? Al sure is precise. See how close together his measurements are? He's highly consistent. And Betty is also very precise. Chris, uh, I would not say Chris is precise, and definitely not Diane. All right, how about accurate? Well, look at Al. He is centered right on the target, so I'm going to say he's precise and accurate. Betty, on the other hand, I don't know. Look, that one is over. That one is off. This is off. That dart is off. She is consistently off. Chris, is Chris consistently off? Well, this one is off. That dart is off. But you see how they're all going to kind of cancel out? So I will say, yes, Chris is accurate. And how about Diane? Ugh, Diane is not precise, and she's also not accurate. Because, you know, on average, she was maybe right here. And she's still away from the target. She wasn't centered on the target. You know, there's some... If we were to, like, average together all these positions... The average might be, I don't know, somewhere over here. So notice, it is totally possible for data to be precise and not accurate. Data that is precise may be inaccurate. And on the flip side, data that is inaccurate may be imprecise. So just because your data is one does not mean it's going to also be the other. Now let's see how well we understand these definitions. Let's say you climb to the top of a building and you hold a ball and you let the ball go. And you time how long your friend is standing on the ground. Here's the grass. And your friend has a stopwatch. Apparently it's a big stopwatch, almost the size of, as her head, size of her head. And you let this ball go and it falls down to the ground. And she measures the time that it took. And here's what she gets. Uh, let's make it a more reasonable value. 3.4 seconds. Now, if she were perfect and made zero mistakes whatsoever, the actual time it would have taken is 3.1 seconds. 
And so then you drop it again, and she gets, hey, 3.4 seconds again. And you drop it once more, and look at that, 3.4 seconds. So every single time she gets this value. Is her data precise? Is it accurate? This data is precise because it is consistent with itself. But is it accurate? No, because you see how it's off from the correct value. Now, maybe your point here, you know, you might argue 0.3 seconds is not too bad. That's still pretty accurate. And that would be fair. That's a reasonable point to make. All right, so let's say now we try it again. And there's a different person down here, or maybe they're using a different device, or something has changed. And so you do the experiment once more. You drop the ball, and they measure 2.8 seconds. And you drop it again, and this time they measure 2.5. And you drop it once more, and what do they get? They get, uh, let's say, 3.4 seconds. And once again, you drop it, and they record a value of 3.5. Let's say seven seconds. What about this data? Is it precise? Well, not really. Look at how much it fluctuates. Almost a you know over a full second. So there's quite a bit of fluctuation. It is not internally consistent. This data is not precise. Is it accurate? Well, consider this value and this one. Well, this one is too low. This one is too low, and these are too high. How can we figure out whether this is an accurate set of data? The trick we use is we take an average. So let's do this. 2.8 plus 2.5 plus 3.4 plus 3.7. Look at that. 3.1. The average time is right on the nose. Perfect, 3.1. And so this data is accurate. It's just like the uh, this target, Chris's target. You know, the data, yes, it is away from the target, but it's kind of spaced away randomly and evenly. Sometimes it's too high, sometimes it's too low. And on the whole, they average to give the target value. Let's look at one final example. Say we have a graph like this. And you're plotting something like the net force on an object as a function of its acceleration. Now we know that F net is equal to mass times acceleration. So maybe what's happening is you know, you're pushing a cart and there's uh, or like a wagon or something and you've got a friend inside and you're pushing with different forces you're changing the applied force and you're measuring how much does the cart accelerate now the mass is fixed so what's the relationship going to be oh we know this it's a direct proportionality this should be a straight line through the origin. Here's the data that you record because you're measuring the force, you're measuring acceleration. And every time you make a measurement, you can mess up. So here's the data that you get. Is that data precise? Well, look at the best fit line. You see how the data makes a nice, smooth, best fit line? Very, very linear, very straight. That is highly precise data. The data is in, you know, internally consistent with itself. But is the data accurate? Well, this first data point was too high. This one was too high. Every single data point was off by the, you know, by the same amount. So what is that like? Which target? It's which of the three targets? It's Betty. See that every single data point is off by the same amount. It's very consistent, but it's not accurate. So this is not accurate data.
All right, what if we do something like this? Let's go back. <clears throat> Someone else takes those measurements, and here's the, here's the data that they get. The first point is here, and then here, and here, here. That one's right on. Maybe there's a point down here, you know. What do you think about this data? Is this data precise? Well, not really, because this one's too high, this one's too low, that point is too high. You know, it kind of fluctuates randomly. It's not very consistent within itself internally. There's quite a bit of fluctuation. So it is not precise data. But is the data accurate? If we average those data points together and we draw a best fit line for the data, look at this. Averaging, getting a best fit line for the data, is right on the theoretical or the expected purple line. So this data, on average, is right where we expect. It's a straight line through the origin. So yes, it is accurate data. In physics, we talk about this in terms of error. Error is just how much your measurement is off by. If you go to the doctor's office and your actual height is 5'4", but they measure you to be 5'6", the error in their measurement is two inches because that's how much they're off by. But is that error consistent or is it random? Is it an, a sign of inaccuracy or is it a sign of lack of precision? Well, let's imagine that you go back to the doctor a month later and they measure your height to be 5'6". You go back, you know, two months later, and again, they measure your height to be 5'6". The error is always the same, and we call that systematic error. There is some systematic flaw occurring every single time, which shifts the data the same amount. The data is always off by the same amount. Okay, what if you switch doctors? You're like, you know what, this is ridiculous. You can't even get my height right, so why am I gonna trust you for medical advice? And so now you choose a doctor uh, on the other side of town. Whoops. And here's what happens. They measure your height. You're actually 5'4", remember. Your actual height is 5'4". They measure your height to be 5'7". Uh-oh. And then they measure your height to be 5'3". And then 5'2". And then 5'4". Oh, they get it right this time, 5'4". Five, five, Notice how they are always off by different amounts. This measurement is 3 inches too high. This one is too low by 1 inch. This one's too low by two inches. Now that error, we say, is random. And the reason is because the measurements fluctuate randomly. from the true or target value. So let's look back to that first page with the target, uh, the targets. Is this data affected by error? No. What about this data? Every single one is off by the same amount. This is systematic error. How about this data? They're off by random amounts. This is random error. And this data is off by random amounts. 
but you see how it's systematic too, because they're all to the left.